money. Today, we're going to look at this briefly because we've, we've been looking at this with um, the economic model um, and the budget model and the PL. Um, you've also looked through the PL and the path of, of money for those of you that went to Profit Camp and previous Profit Camps. And then also the one that there is one coming up in November if you're not, if you haven't attended, uh, that we're at a request for you to attend. It's going to make a big difference in your understanding of monies. Now, last week, um, we talked about the path of personal money. You had the life by design sheet and the personal worksheet. Um, who actually created or finished or maybe you're working on your personal budget and your life by design sheet? <laughs> All right, so um, that is, let's make sure if you haven't, um, that's going to be a, a really big piece because we set our budget and what we want to make based on what does it cost us to live, right? And that includes what are those life by design pieces. So if you haven't done that, we did um, walk you through that last week. You can go back and, and watch that um, webinar because uh, we did introduce some new things around that life by design form. And yet I uh, definitely go back in and, and create your personal budget and your life by design, okay? So that's gonna be the first piece and then um, as we go through today, if you have questions, feel free to unmute yourself and ask, or you can type it in the chat box. Mon is gonna monitor the chat box for us and, and we'll stop periodically if there's any questions or he'll interrupt and just um, you know, ask your question. So um, we're gonna start with path of money. Before we dive into that, are there any questions or anything you'd like to share before we move into the path of money. Okay, path of money that we're gonna look at today, fairly simple, right? Like none, I'm not, not introducing you to any new information, just more um, awareness, right? So uh, when we look at the path of business money, um, we have product sales and service sales. So product sales, cereal box off of the shelf, that's a product. Service sales, real estate. That, right, like that's that simple. So we have a, a product or revenue sale. In our situation, we're gonna have a uh, service sale and that's gonna create revenue. So from that revenue, we have cost of sale and then what's left over is company dollar, right? Again, not anything new. It's just, are we familiar with it? Now, the way this shows up is, is gross profit from where we, you know, then say, okay, if that's gross profit, gross profit, where does the money go? Well, this is the money that actually hits our bank account after cost of sales. So some goes into operating expenses, some goes to pay taxes, and then the rest goes to profit. And then we have three ways to use our business profit. We might put in our uh, we might put it in our business reserves. We might invest it or reinvest it in our people or in lead generation, marketing, that type of thing. Or we might distribute to the owners of the business, right? As an owner's draw and owner's distribution. So again, there's nothing new in this document. Um, we bring the money in, we pay the money out, right? As the result of sales, we have company dollar. The question is, what do we do with it, right? So when we, so one of the things that I'm going to advise everybody is take this form and also the path of personal money that we, we showed last week and maybe print them out, put them up somewhere, get familiar with the path of money uh, for personal and business. And, and we know, right, clarity brings power. Getting familiar is going to start that process. That's one of the reasons that I keep going back and go to profit camp, go to profit camp, right? Um, so just to kind of a quick recap, where do we start? So number one, 
print these two pieces off. I'm gonna, um, what we'll do is I'm gonna take a picture of the path of business money and the path of personal money and I'll upload it into um, our, um, under our hub into the open source so that we can get it, you can print it or, right, just be familiar with that. Then we want to, um, the next piece is you want to make sure that you actually have your um, monthly personal expenses. Like you, we should actually be able to say that down to the penny right now, because last week we talked about you take the monthly, you divide it by 12. If you have something you pay quarterly, you divide it by three and then, you know, put it into the 12 so that we know every month, like how much money it costs for us to live. Then you're going to fill out your life by design form. That makes sure, right? Like, okay, what do we do? How much do we want to make in order to fund our perfect life? Then we want to make sure that we have our path of business. So do you have a profit and loss statement? Um, is it set up according to the millionaire real estate agent uh, material uh, so that we can look at it and say, okay, this is the percentage of, um, of what we're spending in um, marketing, how much are we bringing in for listings and that type of a thing. So if you don't have a, a profit and loss statement, what we talked about um, in previous uh, calls is you don't have to be the one that does it. Get, get a bookkeeper, right? If you, um, there are bookkeepers that specifically work with um, the, you know, the millionaire real estate agent uh, list. That might be a great piece of leverage because um, we just want to be able to see the numbers. It's not important that we become accountants or tax people. It's important that we can see the numbers and look at those. So any questions around the path of money, um, before we move into um, finishing up the uh, time management matrix from the seven habits of highly effective people. Comments, thoughts? You guys are being very quiet today. Okay. So if you do think of something, come back in, put it in the chat box. That's where we were going to go there. So the next piece that we want to look at is what we're learning from the seven habits of highly effective people. Um, Mon, if you will, and I believe that everybody on this call has seen this. Um, sorry, I'm going to plug in my computer. I just realized it is uh, getting very low on battery. So um mine if if you will put that urgency the urgency um assessment in the chat box that way if anybody hasn't taken that they can go ahead and take that all right i will do that thank you okay all right now we're plugged in ready to go all right so again if you haven't taken the urgency um index or assessment, go ahead and um, it's going to be in the chat box. You can double click on that and take that. We just want to see how are we utilizing, um, how are we utilizing the, our time, right? Because so often we are running around and we feel like we're um, really busy and yet it may be that we're not living in the right circle okay so we're gonna we're gonna look at these pieces today again this is um from habit three and the seven habits of highly effective people and it's you know first things first so when we look at this time management matrix all right perfect he just posted that in there so if you uh in the chat box so if you have not taken that assessment let's go ahead and do that now it'll just take a few seconds Now, yep. 
Now we're going to do a quick recap um, when we look at this time management matrix. And again, we're pulling from, from this book. There we go. Um, so this first in the time management matrix, right? Important and urgent. Crisis, emergencies, pet pressing problems, deadline driven projects, last minute preparations. Covey has actually named this box the procrastinator. Important, not urgent, preparation, planning, prevention, values, classification, capability improvement, relationship building, um, true recreation, relaxing. This is quadrant two the prioritizer. Our intent is to spend more time here because this gives us a better return of investment. Then you've got not important and urgent. This are the interruptions, um, calls, emails, the unimportant ones, right? Um, you've got uh, popular items, um, needless interruptions, unnecessary. This is the yes man or yes woman, right? That he's named that because of the overall um, qualities in that quadrant. And then you have meet the slacker. This is trivial work, avoidance activities, excessive relaxation, a time wasters gossip, right? Now, when we look at this time matrix, um, we want to look at this and go, okay, where do we actually spend our time so that we go, okay, we're going to spend time in all of these quadrants. It's not that we're not. It's just where do we spend the majority of our time? That's the, that's the important piece. Where are we spending the majority of our time? Now, this is a, a powerful productivity tool because it can actually um, 10 times your effectiveness, right? And yet it's knowing where we are in that urgent versus important matrix. So the first thing that you might choose to do is evaluate yourself. So how would we do that? So you need to understand the overall concept of this. You also need to know where you are right now. This is going to actually help you decide which changes that you need to make that would impact you the most. So to evaluate yourself, you could take a look at your typical week and estimate the percentage of your time you spend in each quadrant. This doesn't have to be like 100% correct. Right? It's just about having an idea. So if you're having trouble with this exercise, you can document everything you do for a week, write down some exact times, activities. Um, I wanna show you an example of a table in just a second. And you're gonna go, okay, well, based on that, where do I spend the majority of our time? Now, interesting enough, Covey shares with us that um, we spend about 31% of our time in the prioritizing. Well, we really want to up that because that's where we're going to get the biggest return of our, of our time. So an example of a time journal may look like this. You may group what you're doing and then go, what quadrant does that fall into, right? Is that quadrant three where it is um, proactive work, right? Like I'm, um, instead of swatting the flies, I'm fixing the screen, right? I'm not playing whack-a-mole or I'm fixing it so I don't have to play whack-a-mole. Okay, that's quadrant three. Um, am I doing, you know, pressing problems, unforeseen events? Okay, that's quadrant two, you know, quadrant one. Um, needless interruptions, I said yes to that person that popped their head in the door and said, do you have five minutes or do you have one minute? It's never five minutes. It's never one minute, right? It's always a little bit longer than that. Um, so where are you doing that? That's going to help you um, start classifying your activities according to urgency versus important.
right? Um, now here are some indicators for each quadrant. Quadrant one, you typically feel that you're constantly putting out fires and operating in emergency mode. Most of the projects you're working on demand your immediate attention due to a pressing deadline. Okay, that's quadrant one. Quadrant two, you feel like you're on top of things because of careful planning, prep, and prevention. Apart from planning and prep, you focus your time on high leverage projects, new opportunities, learning and relationship building. A lot of this makes me think of the 80-20 rule that we talk about so much, right? Um, are you spending 20% of your time in the important, not urgent, that quadrant two, right? Um, quadrant three, most of your time is spent with activities that require your immediate attention and yet are not necessarily related to your top priorities. You spend a lot of time in unimportant meetings, being interrupted or dealing with non-critical calls and emails. You feel as if you're constantly dealing with issues that are important to others and yet are not related to your priorities. This is one of the reasons why, you know, Jeff Woods talks about in, um, in the One Thing community, you know, he talks about with his 60, he went on a 66 day challenge of uh, looking at his 411 before he opened his emails. That way, wait a minute, what are my priorities before I get sucked into the world priorities, right? And then quadrant four, you often feel like you're wasting your time. You spend a lot of time on busy work that is not directly related to your goals, social media, video games, pointless web surfing, and that type of thing. And again, we all want, need an, an outlet, right? Like um, if you think about important and not urgent, uh, that actually is, um, are we, you know, if we go back right here to the prioritizer, the prioritizer um, is sharpening their saw, which means they're taking time for themselves. They are um, watching a movie with friends or by themselves. They're decompressing. The thing is, if you get into the slacker work, maybe you're doing it all the time, or I'll can make a confession. I was going through some things. I don't know how many of you have watched the Game of Thrones. Um, it's a pretty long series. I got into it... Um, during the last season, I think I watched the entire, I think it was about two or three weeks, I watched the entire Game of Game of Thrones. Do you think there's a possibility that I was hiding and avoiding some stuff, right? That's that slacker piece. So it's not that doing that one show or one thing is bad. We need that. It's just, are we, um, are we living in that too much? Now, the other thing that I always want to point out, I thought it was so interesting, when we're in this procrastinator, um, that um, important and urgent piece, when we spend too much time in that quadrant one, the results of spending too much time here include stress, anxiety, feeling burnt out, and mediocre performance. So if you're feeling stressed or burnt out, double check. Where are you spending the majority of your time? That could be a huge reason that you're feeling that way, okay? So step three, how do we optimize? The most effective people spend 80% of their time in quadrant two. So remember we talked about, you know, looking at where are you spending the most, uh, most of your time? And we talked about a way to figure that out, utilizing some type of time journal. Um, the goal is 80% here, okay? Um, when we do that, this allows you to be proactively work on new opportunities, high level projects, instead of, instead of spending all of your time reacting to pressing issues and other people's needs. The interesting thing um, is, um, uh, so there's a uh, one gentleman in my, uh, there's several of you, but there's one gentleman in particular in my coaching schedule. So Jonathan, he spends the majority of his time, like he lead generates every day. He, um, takes over or right at 115 listings a year and he's less busy than the majority of everybody because, he's more effective. He's staying in the piece that matters the most, right? So he's just one example. I'm sure that, that most everybody in my schedule, I can give an example of that with something. And yet, where are you, right? Are we spending 20% of our time 
I'm sorry, 80% of our time on the 20% activities, right? So um, here's what you do in quadrant one, three, and four activities to free up more of your time for quadrant two Hello, activities. Hi. Did somebody have a question or was that? No, okay. Um, okay, so um, how do we how do we move from or get out of this one and into this one? So interesting enough, today is this call is this one. Um, learning um, and yet now, there are times, do we go to some classes that maybe we don't need to go to? A good, especially right now where we're talking about the business plan. As you're creating and as we're looking at the business plan for next year, one of the things that um, we're gonna create, and I'm gonna, you can start doing it now, we wanna create a growth plan. So where are we going and what, is, what are the classes and activities that we need to attend to get there, right? Like what's our college syllabus? That way, like if your um, if your business is not based on expireds, well, don't go to a class about expireds, right? If that's not now, if you're going to go that direction, you want to bring that in. Well, then let's go to that class. Um, if you don't do web lead generation and you have no intent of doing that, well, then don't go to that class. Now, um, those are I'm just being kind of general, but like which ones are going to benefit. And then let's plug that in. If you're intending to grow, how often are you taking career visioning? Um, how many books are you reading about how to lead other people, how to leverage your time? That's where we want to spend our time. That ensures that we stay in the prioritizer piece versus sometimes just saying yes to things because we feel like we should, right? Okay. Um, so we want to eliminate time wasters. So start documenting how you spend your time for the entire week. Uh, track your mobile screen time. Maybe that could be helpful. Um, where are you? Um, where are you? You know, okay, I'm, I'm in my email. I'm in my text. I'm in my email. I'm in my text. Track those things so that you can then go start eliminating some of those time wasters. Um, you might decide to limit your social media use to a specific times in the day, lunch break or this five minute or that five minutes, right? Um, you might turn off notifications on your phone and computer. So um, I have lots and lots of unopened emails. It bothers me, like I think you've probably seen those things like online, you know, you've got two types of people and you have like, you know, the, the, the thousand unopened emails and that type of thing. Well, maybe take, so that is I'm not on the first screen of my phone anymore. Now it doesn't suck me into something that's not really beneficial. Um, yes, Amanda, the next iPhone update tracks your screen time. Yeah, yikes. <laughs> I've gotten that before. And I'm like, I did what? Um, use an app to block certain sites or, or apps if you need to. Uh, leave your phone at home when spending time with loved ones or turn it off. Um, have set times where, okay, I'm not going to answer my phone. Um, whether it's because you're working on your business or you're spending time in relationships, okay? Then we want to start eliminating busy work. Uh, Peter Drucker shares, there's nothing so useless as doing efficiently that which we should not be doing at all. Sometimes we fall into the pattern, and I've been guilty of this, like you uh, have a, a um, you're dealing with a person or a situation that is draining you, and so you go, oh, I need to put in a system around this. But you might want to stop and ask yourself, wait a minute, is this a one-off? Is this something that's gonna happen again? Is this just because of that person and maybe I need to get rid of that client versus recreating something? So, you know, where can you eliminate the busy work? Um, now, interesting enough, sometimes what happens is what we think of maybe as business work or as busy work 
it's important and not urgent is planning our week. So do you have your plan? So we're about to move into November. Do you have your November planned out? Do you know the top three to four items that are going to move your business forward in November? Right. And then every week, are you going back and looking at your 411 and making the updates? That is the prioritizer. Because just like what we learn in um, the seven habits of highly effective people, when time is scarce and over and over again, that's typically when clients, well, I was busy, so I didn't do my schedule for the week. And then they run around feeling like a chicken with their head cut off. So the reason that I like to use that expression is when we do that, when time is scarce, we go through what psychologists call tunneling, meaning we can only concentrate on the most immediate, often low value task. This urgency mode causes us to lose about 13 IQ points. I don't know about you. I can't afford to lose that many IQ points, right? So that's when, when, so when you feel super busy, you might, be aware, I need to take a breath, I need to stop, I need to, you know what, I didn't do my plan, it is what it is, let me create right now what I need to do and let me put it in order of priority. So you take a step back, right? Um, that's one of the ways to start eliminating that busy work. Before starting a new project, ask yourself, is this really what I should be doing now? What is, does this support? Um, Whenever you're looking at what are the sources of business that you want next year in your business plan, there's a lot, there's 10,000 things that we could do to create business. Um, limit it down to three to five and then say, okay, like, let's say that you're going to work on your database. You might go, you know what, for the next 90 days, I'm going to work exclusively on making sure that my database is where it needs to be. Who do I need to call? What do I need to set up? getting all of that in place, now I'm gonna pull in the next project because then I'm just maintaining it, right? Versus a lot of times we go, oh, I'm gonna go do this and oh, I'm gonna do this and oh, I'm gonna do this. And then we don't do anything at a really high level, right? Learn to say no to pointless requests, whether it's from a colleague, family member, uh, that's probably one of our largest challenges. There was, I think I shared this with you guys the other day and I thought it was really cool. Somebody had, um, had posted and basically they figured out that per minute, based on how much they make and everything per minute, that Rainmakers was uh, valued at $16 a minute. And so they're on their door, it said, I'm lead generating for my family, something to that effect. If you need a minute, have $16 in hand. And for every other minute, <laughs> 16 more dollars, right? Um, and then I'll stop what I'm doing to do that. If they're not willing to do it, it's because now you're reacting to their urgency, right? Um, Gary talks about that. Ben Kenny talks about that. Somebody says, hey, you know, can I meet with you? Sure. Send me an email. What is it that you want to meet with me about? Okay, awesome. I have these times available. Um, make it where it's convenient for you. If they really want it, they will, they will join you there. Um, and then quadrant... Uh, three activities. Quadrant three activities are not important in the grand scheme of things and not relevant for your top priority goals. They are urgent and usually important to someone. Um, thus, they should be done in the most efficient way possible. And it doesn't mean that it falls to you. I think sometimes in our role as uh, real estate agents, uh, because we, you know, we come from a servant's heart, um, we tend to take on everybody's everything. So the home inspector didn't show up when they were supposed to, or the, uh, I don't know, the roofer. All of a sudden, we make that our entire world. Oh, well, let me call him and let me do that. That's not our job, right? Oh my good, you know, I'm a good, so we've got to, we, there, so often we have to, um, step back and maybe remove some of those emotions and say, okay, my job is to connect them. My job is to create the solution. And yet we're all grown ups, right? We're all, we're all smart, 
Nobody needs me to be a hero here. I'm so sorry that happened. Let's, let's create a plan to get somebody back out there. Let's do this, right? But that doesn't mean you have to do it all. So what are you taking on? Are we um, uh, bringing things in that is not really ours to, uh, to take on? Um, so once we, and yet let's, so that's one part of this. The other part is we want to optimize. So make a list of things that are, are not directly contributing to your top priorities and yet still need to be done. Replying to emails, attending meetings, administrative, administrative stuff like booking flights or um, cleaning, grocery shopping, all of those things. And then start looking for more efficient ways to do them. So here are a couple of things. Um, and I'm sure you guys could share some things that you're already doing. Batch similar tasks together and assign specific times for them. So for instance, maybe you reply to emails every day at 2 p.m. and 5 p.m. Or 5 a.m. and 11 p.m. Like whatever that time, but we don't need to be in our email all day. Um, use technology to make the process more efficient. So are, you know, maybe you order groceries online and use a um, smart email, you know, yeah, maybe you order your groceries online, whether they deliver them or you pick them up. Now that's pretty prevalent. You know, you can do that every, most, most every grocery store. Um, using a smart email um, inbox and scheduling tool. Make sure that these tasks don't interfere with your most productive times in the day. That's ultimately what you're looking for. So keep your mornings meeting free. Um, keep the, you know, what's my lead generation look like? And then do some of these tasks, maybe in that midday slump, um, or when waiting in line, things like that, right? Um, do you, you know, so one of the ways to fully optimize your time is setting up a weekly schedule. So do you have a weekly schedule set up with time blocks? Are you honoring those time blocks? Are you coming back and asking yourself, you know what, I said I was going to spend too much, you know, this much time here. Um, so like at the end of the day, going back and evaluating and go, you know what, I realized I didn't give myself enough time or I gave myself too much time here and not enough time here. Where do I need to make adjustments, right? And then, of course, delegating and outsourcing, right? Once you've optimized the process, delegating and outsourcing these tasks can help you save more time. I think sometimes we don't look at it this way. Think um, we can outsource a specific task. For instance, hiring a cleaning lady would cost you probably $10 to $20 an hour. Well, if your time is worth $200 an hour, probably not the best use of your time, right? Um, now, um, you also might look at, so there's places like, if, let's say you don't have an admin, there's places like Fiverr, um, that you can go online and if there's a specific task that you want done, you can hire somebody for a specific task, right? Um, do you have a bookkeeper, right? Like you, again, you don't have to know these numbers, but you can outsource that to a bookkeeper or you need to know the numbers. You don't need to do the task, outsource that to a bookkeeper. Because some of the things that we also want to look at is what is the emotional cost on top of the um, monetary cost of, of things. If you hate cleaning so much that it not only affects the hour in which you're cleaning, it also impacts your mood and productivity for the rest of the day. Let's outsource it. Um, maybe it's the, the laundry, whatever, outsource it, right? Like, um, and then of course, things that you're doing during the day, what can you outsource? Is it bringing in a transaction, you know, reaching out to a transaction, um, management company. Some of us have those in our market centers. Some of those, um, uh, some, but there are people outside of your market center that does that as well. Or is it a, um, you know, a, a, a virtual assistant or is it a regular assistant? Is it a high school student? So uh, we used to, we had a, a matter of fact, he's about to get married. Um, he's in his goodness. He's 25 or 26 now. Went to work with me when he was 16. He worked two hours a day um, and he would come in, he was like, uh, he would come in and do um, like the web lead stuff for me. So he would uh, shoot off emails or text messages. He had very specific, he came in two hours a day, that's what he did and he went home, right? So there are bits and pieces that we can do. Uh, or maybe you hire somebody that can just uh, run errands for you. 
Okay, so, because this is the important piece right here, urgent and not important. When you're in this piece, you're getting your time and energy is an equal return. When we look at quadrant two, which is that extraordinary productivity, our time and energy, we are getting a 10 times return on our time and energy, right? Now, interesting enough, when we're in this one, quadrant three, our time and energy is actually giving us a negative return. And obviously here, there is no return because we're wasting, right? All right, so we're gonna pause here um, I want to hear from, from you. Like, what are you hearing? What are you learning? What are you going to implement? Um, full share. So this was really informative for me because I really just needed like the eye opening of the different quadrants. Like this isn't anything new and yet it still helped me. Um, as we were going through, I went on my phone and like turned off notifications on so many different apps that I know are stealing my time. Um, so I did that. And also, you know, I have a, I do such a great job at planning for the following month and, you know, putting my goals on paper. And yet I know I have an opportunity to, reflect on my calendar and actually put these items on there. Um, and I also realized that I have a lot on my calendar that doesn't need to be there, yeah. you know, just with the team and, um, you know, wanting to help and wanting to be there for everybody else. But, you know, knowing what my hourly rate, my minute rate is, you know, that, that helps me say, okay, you know, I need to spend more time in my business and, you know, maybe point them in a direction of, you know, seeking answers, you know, somewhere else before coming to me or, you know, kind of setting boundaries and knowing my calendar, my schedule, my time. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. And, and even in a lot of times with people, whether we're, it's our admin, um, people in our office or agents on our team, setting that up is huge of going, you know, um, if you need help, these are my expectations. Um, have you went to the class that I told you to go to before you asked? No, well then go to that class. I'm not asking, you know, it, your lack of planning can't be my emergency. Um, love that. Okay, perfect. Thank you for sharing that, Amanda. All right, who else? Let's take a couple more. And we're actually, we're gonna wrap up um, early today. So I'm gonna give you back at least like 20 minutes of your time so that y'all can maybe um start working on some of these pieces or get back in or stay into that that prioritizer section um but who else like what's an aha that you've had is it maybe like amanda's just being able to see the different boxes and how they line out um what's your takeaway from today i would say um not putting everything that you do into calendar uh therefore you end up doing, it's more chaotic and you take too many things on your day rather than really, let's just say, prioritizing and uh, sitting down for three hours in a row and saying, that's the uh, lead generation that I'm gonna do because it's, it's gold. So those are my three hours. And if you do two hours, do two hours, but commit to that. Yeah. And, and I love what you said, Sylvia, because it's, that is so true. Like so many times we treat our calendar like an appointment book, but it's other people's appointments. So, okay. I mean, I've got an appointment to show a house here. I've got an appointment this, but it's instead, and, and we, we said, okay, these are the things that I'm going to complete today. It takes about this much time. I'm going to put it on my calendar. It becomes easier for us to say no to the things that aren't important because for every yes we need to say a thousand no's and so now all of a sudden we go we're clear on oh my gosh now that i've put everything on my calendar um there's not 80 hours today uh, in this 24 hour period so what do i need to move what do i need to say no to okay now i've got it back down to this is the number of hours 
Is there things that I still need to pull off? And then, you know, absolutely giving yourself some time there. So yeah, putting it all on there makes a difference. And I always will say, put your personal first. So Gary says he's got some non-negotiables in his world. He said he's going to eat breakfast with his wife every, like that is a non-negotiable. If his grandbaby is at his house, he is not going to work. That is a non-negotiable. What are our non-negotiables? I've got uh, one of um, uh, the um, agents that I work with. One of the things she's got a non-negotiable right now is 10 minutes of exercise a day. Now she can do more, at least 10 minutes. And a non-negotiable is that she's going to spend 30 minutes at least uninterrupted time with her kids every day where the phone's not ringing. Now, if they have an opportunity to do more, that's great. But at least 30 minutes, because again, it's about being cognizant of, because so often we don't and we intend to, and we look up and we go, oh my goodness. Yes, I spent time with my kids. I was on my phone the whole time, things like that. So yeah, love that. All right, um, anybody else want to add something before we wrap? Nope. Okay. Well, then that's our time, folks. Have an amazing week. Um, you're, um, I know most of us are either done or finishing up our business plan. Make sure we've got that Life by Design form done. That is in the quadrant two. That is in quadrant two. Um, all right. Um, we will talk soon. Have an amazing rest of your day, Friday and weekend. And, and uh, we're out. Bye. Have a good one. Thank you.